All right, so I am back out at Moss Beach. This is one of my favorite areas to paint. Uh, it's sort of a challenge though, because usually it's really windy. Today is calm, so I got here early and uh, gonna take advantage of this morning light. So let me show you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of doing something like this. There were some shadows down here, but they're quickly disappearing. I may just work from memory and add some. Uh, there are also shadows on these cliffs. Those are disappearing as well, so I'm gonna get started. I'm using my Anderson easel today and I'm painting on a 16 by 20 inch panel. Uh, usual palette of colors, although I do have uh, a guest color. Again, this one here is cobalt blue and it's Winton brand. So it'll be interesting to see. Winton is like Windsor & Newton student grade paint, uh, but the quality is really good. So I'm gonna experiment with that. I have toned in burnt sienna. And as I've mentioned before, I like to tone because uh, I like to have some of that warmth coming through in the finished painting. All right, so here is the compositional idea. Uh, as usual, I've made some changes. Um, this, the top of these rocks came out almost in a straight line. So, you know, I felt like making them a little bit more of a slope would be, uh, would look a little better. And then also uh, the rocks in the distance only came out to about here. I wanted to kind of extend them out a bit and then also exaggerate some of the trees in the distance here. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm losing these shadows, so I just quickly sketch them in so that, you know, I know what the shapes are. And then I can just look for little shadows on the rocks uh, to use for the color in here. Uh, but at this point, I'm just looking for an interesting design, you know, like an appealing arrangement of shapes. Here is the straight line that I was talking about along the rocks there. And then you can see here in the distance, these rocks just kind of come out uh, you know, they don't come out that far, so I just extended them a little bit. Uh, now I've completely lost the shadows, but as I mentioned, I kind of blocked those in. So I'm going to use some other areas of shadow, like over here, to determine what the color of that shadow will be. All right, so the cliffs in the foreground are sort of a yellowish color. Uh, so for the shadows, I'm using yellow ochre and dioxazine purple. These colors are approximations at this point. Uh, I can, I'll become more specific. Like there's a lot of warmth in these shadows. Um, this is pretty gray or almost like a brown color. Uh, but sometimes if you want to get warmth in there, lay in a dark color and then come over it with like a yellow or a warmer color to warm it up. But uh, like I said, for now, I'm just going to establish these shadow shapes. Okay, so I blocked in the darks and immediately I can see, you know, something that needs to be worked on. These two lines kind of uh, are parallel. I need to break that up. Uh, what else? I guess, but other than that, it looks pretty good. So I'm just going to mix a color for the sky. And then when I start filling in the rock colors, I'll deal with that. I use the white water to, um, you know, to key the value of the sky. In other words, I'm going to be looking at the two and comparing the values because uh, the white water is the lightest uh, value in the painting. All right, so I've mixed up some ultramarine blue and titanium white, and then also some of that cobalt blue and titanium white. And honestly, the color, you know, the colors are very similar. Uh, if anything, the ultramarine just has more, uh, you know, more tinting power. It's a little more powerful. Uh, but I'll just use these colors for the sky. Okay, and that looks a little bit saturated. So I'll just mix in a little bit of this leftover burnt sienna to kind of tone it down a little bit. I like to gray down colors using complements and orange and blue are complements. So mixing that in will gray down that blue color. I'm using a number eight natural bristle flat. Uh, this brush holds a lot of paint and allows me to 
uh, you know, cover large areas fairly quickly. Uh, if I use like a large brush that took a couple strokes, it would have just a different look. I like the, the look of, you know, the sort of scrubbed in effect. All right, next I'm mixing up color for the dark portion of the water. And again, I'm looking at the white water uh, to judge the value I'm using ultramarine and titanium white with a touch of cad yellow medium. Uh, and I've put a little bit of white paint here just to judge the value. But I'm going with sort of a mid-value blue-green. Because my palette is in the sunlight, I'm uh, you know, just going to put a little bit on here to see what the value is like. And the value shift between the sky and the water is a little bit too extreme. I'm mixing a little bit more white into it, lighten it up a little bit. And I still got a nice relationship between the white water and the dark water. Okay, that's a little better. All right, so I'm gonna work quickly to apply the paint, but I wanna leave areas that are unpainted that kind of suggest where the white water pattern is gonna be. Um, it's nice to establish that early if, it's, if at all possible. All right, next I'm gonna mix up a color for the rocks. I'm going with a mid-tone gray here. And even though this gray is sort of a bluish gray, I'm gonna exaggerate the warmth in there to create a light effect. So the gray was mixed using um, ultramarine and burnt sienna, titanium white. Then I've added some, a little bit of uh, cad yellow medium and then also alizarin crimson to warm it up. Uh, so you can warm up a mix using yellow, but also red works to warm up a mix as well. Uh, and as I mentioned, sort of a mid-tone. And this is a good starting point for the rocks. And then I can go within these shapes and look for specific or, you know, slight changes in value and temperature. I'm going to include some of this ice plant here. Uh, actually, the red of the ice plant will add a nice a bit of red to the composition. All right, so I started off by mixing a green using uh, ultramarine and cad yellow medium, and then I added some uh, cadmium red light and then also a little bit of alizarin crimson and i could also come in and punch up the color uh, of this red as well you know again just making approximate colors at this point because this is in the foreground i want to keep it fairly uh you know really loose and i don't want to draw too much attention i want the eye to be able to pass over into the distance All right, so next I'm going to mix up a color for the light portion of the cliffs in the foreground. And once again, I'm going to push the warmth here. So I'm starting out with a mixture of uh, titanium white and uh, yellow ochre, but I've added some red to this, um, both burnt sienna and then also some cad red light. It's always surprising to me how much uh, red you can mix into yellow. A lot of times I'll put a, uh, you know, I'll apply some yellow to the painting and, I'm, and it looks really green. So again, to uh, calm down that green effect, you know, I'll add red to it, which also warms it up. And as I mentioned before, at this stage of the painting, I'm just trying to cover the whole panel uh, quickly and spontaneously, you know, just focusing on the large shapes. I did put in some white water just using titanium white with a touch of um, ultramarine blue in it. Mixing up some dark rock color here. It's sort of got a straight line here, which I don't like. Start off by kind of erasing a little spot. You know, removing some paint. I'd like to have a few little random rocks in this area here. Uh, that's one way to break up a straight line is with like little details like, you know, rocks or whatever. So you can put, you know, a rock pattern in here. And that doesn't look very good. So I'll keep experimenting until it does.
Right, that's a little bit. I could work with that. Actually, maybe like that. Just so there's sort of an irregular pattern in here. And at this point, I'm gonna walk back from the painting, uh, usually about 10 feet, and just kind of look at it and, and decide what do I need to do uh, to bring this thing in for a landing. Uh, so I'm like an hour into the painting at this point. And, uh, you know, once I've got all the colors blocked in, it, it then I just start looking for uh, little shifts within, it, within the shapes to kind of further define them, but I do not want to mess up the overall design. You know, oftentimes we'll block something in and actually it looks better than the finished product because we overwork it with details that just aren't necessary. A lot of times detail will just sort of draw your eye to those specific things and then you lose sight of the big picture. All right, so here is what I finished up with. And I do like to get a sense of depth in my uh, landscapes or my seascapes whenever possible. So this time I did decide to include some of the foreground here, this foreground uh, cliff, um, and then use atmospheric perspective to push these distant, you know, this distant headlands, you know, kind of push it off into the distance. The painting took about two and a half hours, I'd say. After I scrubbed in the big shapes, I did you know, just come in and look for little shifts within these shapes. But the key thing is to not break up, you know, the overall design. Okay, and we'll do a close up so, you know, so that you can see some of the warmth of the tone shining through and some of the paint application. All right, so as usual, let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. Got a bunch of extra videos on there, materials list. Uh, so if that's interesting to you, check it out. And other than that, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video.